Yeah. I now call the Iberia Parish Council meeting to order. The current time now is 6.01. The prayer is going to be led by Councilmember Paul Landry and a pledge by Councilwoman Bruce Ord. Councilman Landry on the, the prayer. Councilwoman Brussard. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, roll call, Madam Clerk. Tommy Pollard. Here. Michael Landry. Here. Marcus Broussard. Here. Lloyd Brown. Here. Warren Gossain. Here. Natalie Broussard. Here. Paul Landry. Here. James Traha. Here. Scott Rossinet. Here. Eugene Olivier. Here. Brian Napier. Lady Fontenet Brown. Marty Traha. Here. Chad Machaman. Here. We have 12 members in the quorum. Moving on to public comments. I don't need a motion to go into public comments. I have a motion by Councilman Brown, second by Councilwoman Broussard. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, hear no opposition. The ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. Now in public comments, number one, Madam Clerk. Comments from the general public on non-agenda items. We did we receive one from Amanda Landry, representing CASA Volunteer and Fundraising. Ms. Landry, if you can state your name and address for the record, please. It's a three-minute rule. Amanda Landry, and we are at 309 Dahlia Street. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so thank you guys for letting me have a couple of minutes of your time. Um, again, my name is Amanda Landry. I'm the executive director for CASA of the 16th JDC. And our mission here at CASA is to train, recruit, and engage our community to become advocates for abused and neglected children in our community. Um, at the end of January alone, we had 101 children that were in the foster care system due to abuse and or neglect. Our goal is to reunify children whenever possible, and it's safe to do so. But we also have to try to help these children to receive some sense of normalcy while they're in the foster care system. To do that, we provide school supplies, we provide school uniforms, we assist with summer camps, the registration as well as the fees. We also help um, with the expenses that occur are occurred by um, extracurricular activities. In order to provide these children and their families with these services, we have to find community volunteers to help us meet our goals. <laughs> One of the things that we are doing now is to host our first annual Casa Gala, which is going to be Thursday, March the 10th at 630 at the K Community Center. Um, with your ticket price, you will receive light hors d'oeuvres. We do have a guest speaker, Pastor Chris Reese, who is um, part of the Super Bowl champions, New Orleans Saints. Um, we will also have auction items and um, a cash bar. All the proceeds from the cash bar and the auction items will go right back to Casa. Great. So I do have some brochures and flyers if you guys would like any after, I'll have it. If you wouldn't mind, if you can pass out enough Absolutely. for each of the members. Oh, you. Um, or you can give the clerk one and he, she can email it to each of the members. Uh, Thank you so much. Did you want to close? Are you finished? I'm good. Uh, members, are there any questions for Ms. Landry? Hearing none. Ms. Landry, thank you for everything you do for our community. Thank we appreciate you. it. Uh, Madam Clerk, hearing no other non-agenda item requests, we'll go to number two, please. Comments from the general public on agenda items. We did receive one to address summary item number 22. Uh, that person is against it, Mr. John McAllister. If you can come to the mic, state your name and address for the record. Good evening. Uh, John McAllister. I live at 314 Center. Um, <clears throat> been asked yet again to briefly summarize the feelings of my fellow peers in regards to decisions being made so I'll try to get through this as quickly as possible the last time we were here we spoke about change and the impact it has on employees we unanimously agreed that the employees worked hard and were deserving of better wages even though the subject matter of that meeting was different we still firmly felt that wages were something that must be addressed as of January 1st, the employees of Iberia Parish were finally given an increase, and a long-awaited one at that. 
We hung on while waiting for prices and prices fluctuated up while our wages stayed the same. We've not asked for anything other than an honest pay for an honest day's work. We sat here in a meeting where almost every council member in the room said that employees deserve more money. The raise that they waited for was long overdue. So how is it that we are here again tonight to listen to you vote on a matter that directly impacts the pockets of every parish worker? How is it that you can consciously revoke the wages that you fervently agree that the men and women of Iberia Parish were owed? <clears throat> I wonder what influences these decisions, or if there's any actual concern for the workers that are out there every day, breaking their backs to uphold the ideals of the entity that we work for. Did you know that there are many workers that will have their wage increase almost completely nullified? by making them pay for the rise in the insurance cost, if not losing more money than what they actually received. Sure, this doesn't sound like a lot until you look at the wages of an individual employee, whether or not they're an individual on the policy by themselves or whether they have their spouse or their children on this policy. How are we supposed to remain quiet when we seem to be caught in the crosshairs of decisions that seem to be aimed at hurting the employee? And you may not see it as that, but there's not a person alive that can receive a wage increase for only a month, only to have it ripped from their wallets due to rising costs. This is not how you do business. We are not a private company. We're a family of like-minded individuals striving for a similar goal. And that is a goal that we cannot and will not complete due to these lapses of judgment. We don't ask for much, only to be treated fairly. And that should not ever be something a worker should ever have to ask for. As long as we hold up our end, which we have, then it shouldn't be that hard for you to ask to, to, ask to hold up yours. We have a basic right to be considered in the decisions made and not have issues look like this is private industry and we need to protect our bottom line. We're here now to show you that we don't support the decision of making us pay for the influx in price of our insurance, especially at the cost of an increase that we waited years to get. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCaskill. At this time, is there anyone else in the public willing to make a request for to address the uh, council on agenda items? Hearing none, I'll need a motion to go back into regular session. I have a motion by Councilman uh, Pollard, second by Councilman Michael Landry. Roll call members, those in favor will signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, hear no opposition, the ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. Moving on to reports from finance and administrative actions, there is none. Moving on to reports from parish or other governmental agencies, there is none. Moving on to public works reports, there is none. Moving on to special business, there is none. Council member announcements. Members, anyone on council member announcements? Councilman Michael Landry is recognized. Uh, this is a comment. Uh, I think most of us know we lost our last local lawn cleaners uh, a couple of weeks ago when roads closed down uh, in the city, I think in the parish. And I think some of the cleaners are taking clothes now and sending them to Lafayette. So that, that money is going to Lafayette. I think we, uh, we got to look at something to bring some businesses in here uh, and do something. Uh, but we fail it because we can't we can't keep a cleaners open, and, and something's wrong. Yeah, that's that's it. Thank you. Councilman Landry yields back. Anyone else? Any members? Councilman Olivier is recognized on the comment. Yes, thank you, Warren. Uh, I want to first thank you for giving me the opportunity to go to the NACO conference January the 12th through the 16th, just to give a quick report on what what happened at the conference. Uh, the meetings began with the uh, Agriculture and Rural Affair Policy Steering Committee meetings, which was the first day I attended the conference. At this meeting, members across the country focused on the $2.16 billion portfolio of grants and loans aimed at boosting e economic development efforts in rural communities across America. Update given by Under Secretary of Rural Development and the Director of External and Intergovernmental Affairs of the United States Department of Agriculture. We also reviewed the national, the, nation, the, nas the national food supply chain to ensure food security and pass policy resolutions. 
I also attended my main focus, which was Transportation <coughs> Policy Steering Committee, which I serve as vice chair. This meeting provided us with an update on, from the interim director of the Intergovernmental Affairs and senior policy <coughs> advisor, U.S. Department of Transportation. The four and, a half four and a half hour meeting covered things like the new infrastructure bill and highway safety programs and grants. Uh, we reviewed America's public transit system, uh, current federal size and weight requirements for heavy trucks. We also talked about bridges across America, highway safety, and highway systems. We covered rail transportation, air transportation, and port infrastructure. There was two resolutions passed by the committee. I also attended the Gulf State Countries and Parish Caucus meeting, which included the state of Louisiana, <coughs> Texas, Alabama, Mississippi, and Florida. Uh, reviewed funding uh, available for coastal resiliency and evacuation routes uh, grants, that's in the infrastructure package, and other funding opportunity, which is also in the package. We reviewed reform updates to the National Flood Insurance Program from the senior executive of FEMA. Uh, we, we reviewed flood mitigation uh, trends and future, and future of those trends and funding, along with updates and current flood mitigations from the National Academy of Science Gulf research program. I also attended the uh, Rural Action Caucus meeting, membership committee meeting, which I serve as vice chair on, on both of those committees. I am also serve as an ambassador for the membership committee as well. I attended the Immigration uh, Reform Task Force meeting and the South Region Caucus meeting, which I, I serve on also. Uh, the NACO membership heard from many uh, members of Congress at the general section including President Joe Biden, who addressed us on the Tuesday afternoon. The President also made available many of his Cabinet appointees to address questions in the breakout sessions throughout the conference. The last day of the conference, I had the opportunity with the Louisiana delegation to meet with Senator Cassidy at the Russell's Building near Congress. We addressed issues like our National Flood Insurance Program, our Go Mesa funding. Uh, all in all, it was a great conference. It was great weather. Uh, everybody attended had to show proof of vaccination and wear a mask. It, it was nice to meet with fellow elected officials from around the country and reconnect again. I brought back some information with me. I would love to share which for some of the things I picked up off the table, but I will share uh, all this information with the administration, which I already have met with Larry on some information I brought back from Washington, and I'll be meeting with the city and the town to, and, and other departments in the, in the parish to spread that information around. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Councilman Olivier, for that information. We appreciate it. Anyone else, Council Member announcements, members? Hearing none, moving on to the parish president's announcements. Mr. Richard. Before you start, Mr. Richard, I just want to compliment uh, Mr. Broussard. He did a fabulous job uh, at the last meeting, on the last two meetings. Uh, I think he's, he's really Thank performing uh, or meeting <coughs> our expectations. Welcome. Well, I appreciate it, and uh, I agree with you. I think uh, Mike is doing a fantastic job along with all of the other members of the team that we have in Iberia Parish as far as employment employees throughout the parish. Uh, before I get started, I want to um, say thank you to Eugene for the meeting that you and I had in reference to the, um, the um, trip that you had to Washington, D.C., and everyone that you met with. When you talk about the $2.1 billion in grants and loans, it's a, it's a very big deal for council members to be aware. Uh, Eugene came and visited with me today. I ended up calling Parish President in St. Martin Parish, Chester Cedars. <clears throat> we currently don't have a grant writer here. Uh, St. Martin Parish and Iberia Parish, as you know, have, have a lot of the same issues. So what we agreed to, and I'm going to get back with the Parish Council a little bit later, is to look into hiring a grant writer as far as uh, between the two parish. I'm not talking, when I'm saying hiring, I'm not talking about hiring as an employee. I'm talking about to hire to try to get some grant dollars for us. We have a lot of opportunity right here. Eugene uh, brought back the complete booklet that I showed. I think Warren was in the office and Natalie and Paul and Marcus. And I showed you guys this thing here. Uh, so we have a lot of opportunities right here, right now to try to, um, to get some grant dollars. So Eugene, I want to thank you so much for that. I appreciate it 100. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, uh, Public Works 
course, you know, got all kind of stuff going on. And another thing for you before I start with public works, we have uh, gone to the old public works facility and we have knocked down the buildings that we have talked about getting knocked down for many years. Uh, those buildings were one of the reasons we moved away from public works and went to the new facility is because of the amount of insurance dollars we're spending in that flood zone. So I want to uh, commend Dexter and his staff on doing the work that they did there. Um, I went there today, and for the most part, I would say we're around 85% complete in knocking and removing everything from there, uh, removing everything down from there. Um, the last couple of weeks, public works, as far as COVID inspections, we did some COVID inspections in District 10 and 11. Uh, debris pickup in District 3, 6, 11, and 12. We had some trees that was down in District 12. We took care of that. Uh, field drainage work we did in District 8 and District 14. Roadside drainage work we did in District 3. Uh, road grading work we did in District 9 and 12. Uh, also in District 12, we had some limestone that needed to be placed in various areas, so we took care of that. Road patching work we did in District 3, 5, 7, 10, and 13. Uh, we did um, a side boom and front ditch work uh, in various uh, districts throughout the parish. We had a lot of signage uh, work that we had to get done over the last two weeks in District 3, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And in uh, District 14, we had some trees that had fell and also some um, tree trimming that we had to get done. So uh, thank you so much, Public Works. Uh, we did the uh, litter abatement program on uh, February the 12th. Uh, trash were picked up on Troy Road and Sugar Oaks Road. We picked up 97 bags of trash, on just trash. Uh, and of course, with the trash, you have everything else that goes along with it, the tires and the mattress and everything else, as you guys are aware. Uh, that's a, a very big deal. In fact, speaking of trash, we did a, a project for some uh, drainage improvement on OLA 25. <coughs> and when I was driving there last Friday, I think it was, on the way there, there was this big gathering of it's not my trash. So I called up um, uh, Waste Connection and, hope, and that stuff was removed. So we're we, we looking good right there. Look, we have a long meeting. Uh, par uh, council uh, Chair, I don't know if I mentioned to you that there's another thing I'm supposed to go to after this council meeting tonight. So I'm going to stay here for the council meeting and then I'm going to go to uh, take care of the um, other issues that we have to deal with. Okay. okay. Uh, Thank you. Members, are there any questions for the parish president at this time? We do have a question about Councilman Pollard. Any update on uh, road stripings? Or yes, surely anything. did. In fact, I talked to Dexter today about the road striping. We should finish up what we're doing right now. now. Remember, we're using the same employees to do everything, so we should finish up at Public Works, he's saying, maybe Thursday or Friday. If we finish up Thursday, we may start the striping on Friday. We have to get back with sellers. Uh, if we don't start it this week, we'll be doing road striping next week but we have to make sure that when we do the road striping that we have sellers and, sellers and associates there uh, to make sure that we're putting the stripes in the right spot but yes we should start that first street no later than next week and if i'm not mistaken the first street i didn't mike may have it but if i'm not mistaken i think the first road we're going to start on is darnell and uh so that's going to be done next week thanks sir Councilman you're very Paula, welcome. are you finished yes sir Councilman Paula, you was back I, I guess since we own that have we gotten an update from the state on the roads that they're going to come in and do? Yeah, uh, yeah is, is the, uh, the, a, the MPO, Acadiana Planning Commission. Um, Warren, I hate to say it like this, but every time I talk to them, we've been striping roads, if you remember, six months ago, as far as it goes with them. Uh, so now they're telling me that uh, it should be done within the next quarter, that's next three months. But we're going to have to wait and see. That's the reason. I decided to start a strike, you know, when we, we got the striping machine from council approving the dollars to get it, start a striping ourselves because, um, of course, we can't do some of the streets that they're talking about is a little too much traffic right. or whatever, but uh, we can't wait. We, you know, we got too many issues yeah, going on sure. in our area parish, but sure. hopefully in the next quarter. Anyone else on the questions for the parish president at this time? Thank you, Mr. Richard. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank Hearing you. none, moving on to the consent agenda items for public hearing and adoption. Madam Clerk. Minutes, regular meeting of February 9th, 2022. Summary number 26, Madam Clerk, introduced by the legal counsel. A resolution authorizing the parish president to execute an intergovernmental agreement between the state of Louisiana through Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority Board and Iberia Parish Government regarding the construction of the Rodare 
canal water control structure to provide for the effective date thereof and to otherwise provide with respect thereto. Do have a motion. I have a motion by Councilman Marty Trahon, second by Councilman Olivier. Councilman Trahon on discussion. Yes. Yeah, uh, okay, let, let me just say this first. Did you want to address and talk about a certain agenda item? Because we can take that up at this point in time and adopt the minutes, and then we can go and talk about the CPRA line item. Yeah, I have a request on the floor by Councilman Olivier to remove summary number 26. Hearing no other requests, I'll need a mo uh, um, members will just vote to accept minute the minutes for the regular meeting on February 9th. Uh, we still had the motion from Councilman Trahon, Marty Tron, second by Councilman Eug uh, Eugene Olivier. Okay. okay, so the roll call vote will be just on the minutes, and then we'll come back and redo on the summary number 26. I need a uh, Roll call members, those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, hear no, no opposition. The ayes have it and the motion carries unanimously. Now going to summary number 26, introduced by legal counsel. It's already been read. I'll need a motion. I have a motion by Councilman Trahon and a second by Councilman Olivier. Councilman Trahon on discussion. Yes, uh, you can have the same motion in a second. Mm -hmm. Just forward my time to you, Councilman Trahon yields back. Councilman Olivier on discussion. As you know, the administration has been working on all these fuck and show structures across the parish, following the guidelines of the uh, Levy District uh, Master Plan. Uh, I want to thank Larry in particular for working hard on the funding for these projects. Uh, this project here is a $2.3 million project that's going to be funded strictly by CPRA. You know, so uh, I want to really thank Larry for the efforts he put out in being at the table when it comes to uh, getting these state dollars to do these type of projects. And I'll definitely ask you to support a project that somebody else is paying for. Thank you. <laughs> Councilman Olivia yields back. Anyone else on discussion on the main motion? Hearing none, roll call members. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, hearing no opposition, the ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. Moving on to ordinances introduced for public hearing and adoption, there is none. Moving on to summary number 22, introduced by the parish president, Madam Clerk. A resolution authorizing the renewal of A, group health insurance benefits with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Louisiana, B, dental benefits with Guardian, and C, life insurance benefits with Dearborn Life, and E, for the period beginning on April 1st, 2022 to March 31st, 2023. Give a note. Note, table from the February 9th, 2022, I beg parish council meeting. Do have a motion. I have a motion by Councilman Michael Landry. Second. Second by Councilman Paul Landry. Councilman Landry on discussion. Councilman Michael Landry waves. Councilman Paul Landry in discussion. I, I think I threw the flag out here to uh, table it last time, and I'm obviously there's a couple people uh, in the audience that must be a little concerned and things. Um, I don't know all the ditches we dig, but I do know a lot of the finances that we have. Uh, I know we have a $1.4 million bond payment to pay, and we're only getting 300000 from the, the finance, so we're a million short there. Uh, sales tax uh, revenue for garbage we're seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars short um, what I'm getting to is uh, the reason I like to watch these numbers and try to figure out where we're at and slow things down at time that if we ever miss a bond payment uh, the state comes in and they remove our finance girl Ms. Kimberly from the uh, from the office and what happens is the bond payments are paid before payroll so I don't know who would have to go out into the field and let the workers know that they wouldn't be paid that week, but it's something that we can't let ha happen. And with a lot of these shortages and different budgets and stuff, uh, I take it you know seriously that when you have a uh, being hit with a half million dollar increase, you know we, we need to kind of put the brakes on it. And we did have a time to come through, and uh, I will be supporting you know getting the insurance and things, but you know we, we just can't keep spending the way we were with the revenue falling so much shorter so you know that's a lot of the reason that uh, that that i asked for the table and again i know a lot of things that some of the other people in the audience don't know uh but always willing to let anybody call me and we'll talk about it some more but um with that uh i'm good mr chairman councilman landry yields back anyone else on discussion on the main motion councilman rawson is recognized yeah, I'd like to add on to that if you, you don't mind mr landry you know i look I look at this book too religiously. Uh, every Sunday morning around 4.30, if anybody wants to come drink coffee, y'all are more than welcome to. Uh, I, I do look at it. And, and we talk about the 23% increase, which 
granted, everybody <coughs> in this room and in this parish is went up. Mine went up. It was roughly 20%. So I don't think it's the rate we have right here. But we talk about the 23% and we say, well, it could go down next year. Just keep in mind, it only has to go up 16%, 14%. 10% and all of a sudden we're four or five million dollars in the hole in about four years it's actually more than that it's three and three and three years and, and compounding so we talk about this little money tree we got the leaves fell off of that tree will be dead quick so he's right we do have some bond payments uh, we're going backwards uh, we have to think down the road 23 24 25 and uh, to, to think we're doing it against the employees, that's not what it's about. You know, I had to take a lick myself where I work. I'm sure some of y'all did too. But we do have to keep this book in mind, not only for the workers, but for the parish. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilman Rawson, they yields back on discussion. Anyone else, members? Councilman Olivier is recognized. I didn't want to make sure the, uh, my colleagues are aware that the, the cost of the insurance is shared between every department. You know, um, sewer district pay their share, park and recreation pay their share, uh, public building and maintenance pay their share out of those funds, uh, drainage, you know, and so forth and so on. So although the insurance check is written out of the general fund, uh, we are actually bringing in money from all these other funds to write that check. Okay, so I think the last conversation I had with Kim, I think the actual uh, burden on the general fund was about $50,000, actually, that was going to cost us extra for this, this, this increase in the insurance premium. Yeah. All the other funds are paying the difference of that uh, $329,000, I think it was, in extra funding. So I just want to make sure you are aware of that as well. Okay. Councilman Olivier, just a challenge on that. Is it 50000 or 70000 You got the exact number? This is around 57000 in the general fund, 57000 roughly in, in the five district. When you're looking at all of the other, all of the other departments, for the most part, um, except when you're looking at the health unit. But what they, about they, road district? You had, you. What? You, you've got a balance. You, I believe road district was going to be affected too mm -hmm. in it. That's why I'm saying yeah, road district don't have a lot no. of money to begin with. No. I think Larry can probably explain no, it no. to you. And I would I would defer, of course, to Kim if yeah, you want to go Mike. Let's get those ground yeah, numbers. Yeah, get if the round numbers because it's not what you guys are, are, are thinking at all. I think when you say, I think when you say three hundred thousand dollars or whatever that magic number is, you're thinking it's coming from one fund. But they have taxes. We have Correct. dedicated funds in, in areas to take care of some of those. Just so you know. So the impact on the parish's general fund for the employees that are paid out of general fund is fifty-seven thousand. That also includes the the retirees that are um, funded um, mm -hmm. out of out of general fund. The impact to roads is approximately twenty twenty thousand. So about seventy. Right. Right. Okay. Um, if y'all have questions, I mean, like you know, I have each fund, yeah. you know, kind of labeled. If y'all have questions about a specific fund, um, you know, aside from that. Aside from general fund, the other fund that has the largest increase is fire district. Their their share is approximately fifty seven thousand as well for their employees. What while she's here, is there any questions for Mr. Gur while she's here? I just wanted to clear that up for the record member so that you know I mean there was talks around the chamber that that money was gonna be strictly from the general fund though, and that hasn't been uh the direct cost is I wanted to say seventy thousand, I thought somewhere around there. You're right. Correct. Mr. Gur, did you want to finish with anything? Um, no, just just so so this is not amending the funds. We'll have to come back and amend the funds. Correct. But after you know, I guess we kind of get maybe some direction. Um, uh, we can prepare the entry and have the the budget entry and have that ready for the next meeting. Well, it seems like the administration has already identified that, which is good. We are ahead of the game. Yeah, and just so like on the seventy seven, instead of pulling it out of the regular fund balance, if we put it pull it out of the ARPA piece on the lost revenue side. Um, is that that's what like, you're proposing? Yes. Okay. Okay. Mr. Gerd, is, is that all you had? Uh, there is a question for you, Mr. Gerd. So, uh, I understand most of this. The uh, general fund will pay for the, the general fund and for the road fund. Uh -huh. And as Eugene said, there's other budgets that are going to be. Are any of those other budgets that it's going to be coming out of uh, showing a deficit at this time? Is that, Mr. Mr. Uh, are you asking a question that you already know the answer to? Yes, sir. 
Ms. Sugar, if you want to answer that on the record, please. There are deficits, and, uh, you know, I mean, you mentioned earlier, you know, Correct. solid waste. Yeah. Most solid of... waste's share is 3000 mm -hmm. Um and then, you know, Health Unit also has a deficit. The Health Unit share, Health Unit also funds rabies. So, um, the, but the, we would, the we would probably say 80% of the budgets that is coming out of is already have a deficit before we add some of this uh, to it. And, and I'm going to vote for it. I want you to understand, I want our, our, our employees to have insurance and things. But at the same time, I think everybody needs to understand that and this is not, well taken. Th th this, this is something that it's another lick that we're taking that we never expected That's exactly right. and you know and you know 750 out of the the garbage tax and then you know you throw a little bit on top now we had 900,000 you know two ye two years we won't be uh, you know picking up garbage or the people will be paying it mm -hmm. you know and then I, I just you know um, it can be what it wants to be but I think a lot of people out there are just looking from their from their opinion and theirs only you know and Councilman Landry, just in defense of the solid waste, I believe we're having those conversations now about the future of that and I, coming I, up with some remedies. And I hope we problem. do it quick because we only have two years. <clears throat> Ms. Agura, did you? I'm good. You I were good. I don't have anything else. Unless There's I'm a lot of passion here, Ms. Agura. Yes. Thank you, Councilman Landry. Thank you, Ms. Agura, for what you do. Members, any, anyone else on discussion on the main motion? Hearing none, there will be a roll call vote. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. Those opposed? Hear no opposition, the ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. Moving on to summary number 27, introduced by the parish president. Madam Clerk. A resolution amended the 2022 Public Buildings Maintenance Fund budget in the amount of $616,310 to provide for carryover funding in the amount of $180,250, and additional funding in the amount of $436,000 $60 to provide for courthouse second floor courtroom renovations improvements project all to be funded from fund balance previous years do have a motion Move. have a motion by councilwoman bruce Second. second by councilman olivier councilwoman bruce on discussion Wait. councilwoman bruce or waves councilman olivier on discussion all right anyone else on the main motion for discussion members I second his comment. did you have some mr Richard? okay here no discussion uh roll call vote those in favor will signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, hear no opposition, the ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. Moving on to summary number 28, introduced by Recreation and Playground Commission. Madam Clerk. A resolution amending the 2022 Recreation and Playground Commission fund budget in the amount of $45,544 to carry over unspent capital project funding to fiscal year 2022 and transfer funding within department oh. line items. I have a motion by Councilman Rawson. Do I have a second? <coughs> a second by Councilman Paul Landry. Councilman Rawson on discussion. Wait. Councilman Landry. Wait. Members, uh, any discussion on the main motion? Hearing none, roll call. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? Hearing no opposition, the ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. Summary number 29 introduced by the parish president, Madam Clerk. A resolution authorizing the execution of the system survey compliance questionnaire for the financial audit for fiscal year ending December 31st, 2021. Do have a motion. Move. Have a motion by Councilman Brown. Second. Second by Councilman Landry. Councilman Brown on discussion. Move. Councilman Landry. Move. Any discussion on the main motion, members? Hearing none, roll call. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? Hear no opposition, the ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. <clears throat> There is a uh, expansion on the floor. Uh, summary number 30 introduced by Eugene A. Olivier, District 10. Madam Clerk. Discuss and consider a motion to expand the agenda to discuss and consider the following items. Summary number 30 introduced by Ol Eugene Olivier. A resolution authorizing a change in the regular meeting dates of the IBA Parish Council and Joint Committee meetings from March 9th to March 16th due to the Police Jury Association's annual conference being held from March 9th to 11th. 2022. The purpose of this expansion is to change the regular meeting date of March 9th to March 16th in order to allow the Ibiza Parish Council members and administrative staff to attend the Police Jury Association of Louisiana's annual conference. Do have a motion? Move. Have a motion by Councilman Olivier, second by Council Member Paul, uh, Michael Landry. All right, members on first for the expansion, we'll need to expand the agenda. That will take uh, unanimous. Do uh, at this time on the expansion. To expand the agenda, there will be a roll call vote. 
Those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Hearing no opposition, the ayes have it and the motion carries. The agenda is now expand, expanded. I'll need a motion to go into public comments. I have a motion by Councilman Pollard, second by Councilwoman Broussard. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. aye. All those opposed? Hearing no opposition, the ayes have it and the motion carries. We're now into public comments. Is there any, I'm sorry, Council, uh, Parish President? No, the 16th. It's going to be moved from March 9th to the 16th. Correct. Uh, is there any comments from the general public at this time on the expansion? I have a motion by Councilman Olivier and a second by Councilman uh, Trahan to go back into regular session. Roll call members, those in favor will signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? Hearing no opposition, the ayes have it and the motion carries unanimously. Moving to the motion and the vote on the item. Summary number 30, Madam Clerk, again. A resolution authorizing a change in the regular meeting dates of the IBE Parish Council and Joint Committee meetings from March 9th to March 16th due to the Police Jury Association's annual conference being held from March 9th through 11th, 2022. Do I have a motion? I have a motion by Councilman Olivier and a second by Councilman Trahan. Councilman Olivier on discussion. for your support. Thank you. Councilman Olivier yields back. Councilman Trujillo on discussion. Councilman Trujillo waves. Members, uh, discussion on the main motion. Hearing none, roll call vote. Members, those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, hear no opposition. The, the ayes have it and the motion carries unanimously. I'll need a motion to oh. adjourn. A motion by Councilman Brown. Second, Second by Councilman Trujillo. Marty Trujillo. Roll call vote, members. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, hear no opposition. The ayes have it, and the motion carries. We're now adjourned.